<laughs> Hello, world, and welcome. I am Parker, the Great Bear of the North, and this is Planet Coaster, a brand new series that I've been looking forward to for an extremely long time. We're going to do Carhu Electric Park, inspired by the World's Fairs, by the Luna Parks, by the Sea Lion Parks, by all the really old amusement parks where lights and just the novelty and spectacle were certainly part of the attraction we're going to go with the harder difficulty not because i necessarily want to start with less money we're actually going to choose the money at the beginning but after that i do want a little bit more difficulty in uh, maintaining ride reputation and attracting guests and keeping them happy and these kinds of things we're in a custom city environment so wherever you live carhu electric park is in your city congratulations it's going to start a brand new city a brand new city, a brand new park. Before we even do anything, let me just change a couple of things. Well, first off, I know that we're going to need to get a new loan. Just trust me on this one. We're also going to go with until midnight. We're going to close at midnight. Actually, no, that's midnight is 12 a.m. Yes, good. No park, no ticket. No, no cost to enter the park, but we're so that's going to be a pretty good. We're also going to just get some paths. Let's open this up because this is going to be. Oops, let's get the angle snap on. This is going to be like the exterior path of the park. So let's just expand that out there. We're going to start with a very, very classic ride, the Grand Carousel, and we're going to start with the carousel because it's one of the oldest rides in the entire world at least the concept goes back to the crusades but i will wait for voiceover karhu to tell you that for now we're just going to start it probably here we're just going to start it right there we're going to place the entrance right out back we're going to place the uh, actually where's the right operator the right operator is there so we're actually going to move it so that the right operator is right close to the front that's because any time that a ride breaks down, you actually need the, the the engineer, the mechanic, to go talk to the ride operator. So we don't want to have to go all the way around. We're just going to have the exit right there. Fantastic. Connect entrance with the path. Connect the entrance to the park. We're just going to go right there. We are going to... Whoops. We're going to snap the angle a little bit. We're just going to curve around. There we go. Just try to hug that as close as we can. We are going to build a fence there for safety purposes. But for now, that's how that is going to go. And there's our entrance. Boom! There's our carousel. Now, right now, the carousel isn't a particularly prestigious ride. 252. But we're going to up that. We're going to up that quite a bit. We're going to up that to five. Oops. I think we have one too many spins. One, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, you only want five, which will increase the ride length, increase the excitement, increase the prestige, and more importantly, we can increase the amount of money we charge for it. So we will test this. Boom. And while we test this, I'm just going to start putting the fence around here. I'm going to start detailing this in order to, well, here you go. See, this is the two scenery rating. Right now it's at 0% because there's no scenery. There's nothing here. But if we manage to get that up to 100%, people are more likely to ride our ride because it will increase our prestige. And more people wanting to ride our ride means more money for us. So I'm just going to detail this while voiceover car Haru gives you a little bit of background about the history of carousels, which is absolutely fascinating. At least to me it is. Hello everybody, this is voiceover car who coming at you over the airwaves. I'm not entirely sure why I said that, but it seemed like the appropriate thing to say. But anyways, merry-go-rounds or carousels are a fascinating ride type to me because they're one of the oldest ride types in all of existence. In fact, it goes all the way back to the Crusades. Perhaps even before the Crusades, because in the Crusades, the European knights that went over to the Middle East and Arabia, when they came, one of the things that they saw there was an exercise by by the people that were already living over there. And what they did is they would get on their horses and they would ride around in a circle. 
and they would throw heavy balls to one another, kind of like medicine balls or weight balls. And this was to get them to be very, very strong on horseback. Because you have to use a whole bunch of different stabilizer muscles, a whole bunch of different kind of mindsets when you're on horseback and doing these things and when you are on the foot when than when you are walking on foot. And so this got them a whole bunch stronger for their eventual prowess in battle. But the Europeans, the Crusaders, the Knights, brought this back with them, and they started doing this kind of as a training exercise themselves, and they called this the Carosella, or the Little Battle in Italian, in Spanish. This is all according to the research I've done. I don't know how much of this is true, but this kind of seems really awesome to me. So that's what the idea of a bunch of horse riders going around in a circle for an extended period of time comes from. It's, it's from this, from crusade era military strategies and military training, which to me, that is fascinating. And so when this came back, it eventually started to become a parade drill. They would use it during jousting tournaments. They would even... Uh, Louis XIII used it, I believe it was Louis XIII, to announce the birth of his son, Louis XIV, where they had a big carousel, and this eventually grew and grew, and then it started to become a little ride. In, the, in Italy and in France, they started to have little wooden horses that were drawn around in a circle, powered by a real horse, but for kids that were too small to ride the horses. And then this became a really, really popular contraption, and it goes throughout history. They started getting steam-powered ones in the mid-1860s, and in fact, according to, again, according to Wikipedia, the first steam-powered carousels, people thought that they were going to fly off. But clearly they didn't, but I, again, I don't know how fast this original carousel went. So it keeps going and keeps going. And eventually till we get to the carousels that we have today. So that specific image of horses going around in a circle is from the Crusades. Which is pretty cool. Now in terms of the actual history of carousels themselves, like the, the, the actual ride, is from what I can understand, one of the oldest carousels in the world was actually in Paris at a place called Place de Carousel. And this, I, I believe this one was steam powered. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not an expert on this. I'm just sharing with you what I remember. And Place de Carousel is still there. It's right out front of the Louvre today. I've been there many times. I didn't know that that was why it was called Place de Carousel. That's because there was a giant version of a carousel there. Now, in terms of the oldest ones that are still in existence, one of the oldest ones that's still that that is still in existence is um, the Hanau Carousel in Wilhelmsbad, Hanau in Germany, I believe. Yes, yeah, Hanau is in Germany, and this goes all the way back to 1780. 1780, at least the the. The, the structure itself. The horses and the coaches date back from 1896. Like This is super, super old. So when I say oldest, I mean it's one of the oldest. But I have a personal connection, sort of, with one of the other oldest ones, Le Galopin, which was built in 1885 uh, in Belgium. It was there until the 1960s, and then it moved to New York for the World's Fair, the one World's Fair, the one that inspired that Disney had a huge part of, and then it moved up to Montreal in Expo 67, just three years after it came to North America. And I lived in Montreal for several years. I've been on Le Galopin a dozen times, maybe even more. That is specifically like I didn't realize at the time that it was the arguably the sixth oldest carousel in the entire world, which is really crazy to think about. Now, there have been other versions of carousels throughout the world. It's not just the, the horse riders going in a circle that we're so used to today, but there have been boats going around in circles. There have been airplanes going around in circles, which is a kind of ride type that we get to a lot 
a little bit later on. But in fact, the, the rocking motion that makes the horses go up and down, that galloping motion, was actually from somebody experimenting with trying to replicate the movement of the waves. So there were boats that happened. In fact, there was a boat carousel drawn by horses, but just boats going around in a circle in an actual canal that was from the CNE grounds in Toronto, the Canadian National Exhibition Grounds, way back in the 1880s. So again, there's a little bit of a personal connection between me and some of the older ones too. And I just think, you know, I, I know a lot of people knock carousels because they're not very exciting, because they're not very thrilling. But you know what? For sheer, for sheer history, for sheer technological innovation, if it weren't for carousels, arguably no other ride type that we have today would exist. I mean, perhaps we might still have roller coasters. That was a different thrill. We might, again, have something like a Ferris wheel. But so many other rides are based on spinning mechanisms just going around in a circle, the octopus, the tilt world the hurricane, all of these things are just really advanced, really thrilling carousels. And so I would like to think what it would be like if nearly a thousand years ago, the people that had first seen these exercises, this ball night training exercise, if they hadn't decided to bring that back with them, where would amusement parks be? What would they look like today? Will we still have amusement parks? Or does all of this kind of go back to that one idea? And that's something that I don't think we could ever really answer, but it certainly makes a fascinating theory. Fascinating, at least to me, exercise and philosophy and in historical what ifs. But here's another what if for you. What if we had taken, or somebody else, not necessarily Europeans, but what if people had taken other military training exercises and turned them into amusement park rides? What would they look like? And I don't know. I don't know, but it's just... It just kind of reinforces the idea that no matter what decisions you make today... You could, even if it's something small, like, hey, here's this video I saw on the internet about this cultural practice in some other part of the world. I mean, while still being respectful, while still being honorable, this could inspire people to, a thousand years from now, have an entire industry that is indirectly based on that one decision. And that's fascinating to me. That's absolutely fascinating. Far more fascinating to me than placing all these shrubs, but I'm almost done with this. Just, what's your favorite ride? What is your favorite ride? Do you have any interesting stories about carousels that you want to share with me? If you do, hit me up in the comment section below. But, yeah, this voiceover became a lot more philosophical than I thought. Hope you guys enjoyed it. But anyways, back to back to real time, Kahu. All right. I hope you found that voiceover a little bit illuminating and nearly as not nearly as illuminating as these classic Victorian lights, probably, but still illuminating nonetheless. I thought that that history was absolutely fascinating. So you can tell by this particular um, by this carousel because it goes in the clockwise direction. This is very much made by British carousel makers which is just a little fascinating detail that i never would have considered myself but so currently we've got 65 percent q scenery rating we do need a little bit more so let's get actually before i forget let's get some vintage bench traditional no vintage bench victorian i do again want a victorian theme for this so let's get some benches i think we're gonna get any benches there we're gonna get a vintage bin. Can we get the bins back there? No. They don't like that. So let's get some. I, I also don't like people sitting right next to bins. So. 
So let's get a bin right at that exit. Do what I want to do is three. If I go this, I will get these, the tree guards. We can get the iron version, which is aces and spades and whatever. Or we can do this version. If we do this, and then we put in a street ash tree, we can have them actually land the surface. It's position snap. There we go. These will automatically just drop right into those. They're pretty cool, I think. But you know what? I think I want something a little bit taller. Something something like a not a K-pop. Those are really tall, but they're really also really, really thick. Maybe a beech? A birch? Maybe not that particular birch. Or this birch. Gee, let's just see which birch is better for what I'm thinking. Okay, minute, middle birch. Birch tree two. So we can just slide those right in with there. Right into its DMs. There you go. And we've got like this tree and this protective shell. Just to make sure that nothing eats it, nothing gets to it. Especially for a park like this. That's very important. However, it's also important for a park like this that we can actually see the signs. So instead of... There we go. There's Carousel right there. Actually, if we put the tree here, people coming up this way... Whoa! Keeps coming this way. won't be able to see it. So... Maybe we just have... There. We just do something like that. Right in the middle. We're actually going to delete that. I know I don't have... Uh, great refundability in terms of my in terms of my uh the difficulty level but that is okay so let's do this let's get some beaches we got nine and nine problems but my beach ain't one yeah i went there oh boy all right actually no these are birches never mind these aren't beach trees these are birch trees Okay. Oops. There we go. These, yeah, everything does still appear to be lining up quite nicely. Let's get three of those. That may be more than we need. It is definitely more than we need. But you know what? We're going to do that anyways, because then we can spread this one out. We can move that one a bit there. There we go. Look at that. It's just, ooh. This, this gap between these two is bothersome now. There we go. There we go, we have a tree-lined street. Look at that. Fantastic. Let's get some benches. We don't need tree in the bench name. There we go. This is... Well, first of all, let's get the bins where we want them. We have one bin there. Let's get another bin there. Let's get another bin... Just like in the shade of each tree. I mean, this is way too many bins. We don't need this many bins. Most of our people... I don't know why I built that many bins. Well, those are our bins right there. We're going to get some trees. We're going to get some benches, rather. Nope, no possibility for a bench there. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to delete that one. We're going to have a bench right there, right near the... Uh, nope. We're going to do it the other way around. We're going to delete this this one. Can we move that? Oh yeah. Delete this, select this one. There we go. And then we move that one. There we go. So that one is going to hide right there. That one's going to stay hidden there. And then this bench, we're going to duplicate that bench and slide one right there, which means during some times of the day that will actually be in the shade. Just not this particular time. There we go. Yes. And what is our test rating? 647. Boom. That's only with a 72% Q scenery rating. So if we just add some more trees, this is going to knock your socks off. What I can charge for this. Absolutely. Just ridiculous. Absolutely bonkers. I'm just going to get some oak trees in here. Just oak trees just to kind of... There we go. 
I'm just gonna fill that in. Just uh, I want a different oak tree just for giggles. There we go. And this is already at 76. All right. Ooh, Crimson King. Oh, that's a beautiful tree. Yes. Yes. I'm gonna get another oak. A little bit of a smaller oak right there. There we go. It's a parasol in the woods. Love it. 83% just from those two trees. Let's get a nice poplar. I find that they're very popular this time of year. So let's just get that right there. Let's get another one just right there. Again, what do we got? 86%, man. Okay, so let's get some let's get some bushes. Gladiolus flowers, eh? Oh, that's cute. Yeah, what if we got just flowers? Just oh, oh, I know where we can get flowers. Just lining that. No, that's that seems tacky. That seems tacky. The depth of field is lovely, but that seems tacky. Miniature conifers. Let's get a miniature conifer or two just right in there. Just get that a little bit of depth. Let's also get a little bit of another miniature conifer there. Again, mini connies. Now what are we at? 90%. Okay, we some more big trees is what we need. Let's get some ash. There we go. How about now? 96. Okay, let's get giant oh a lovely tall sycamore right there i think i'll stick a more there 100 percent, 100 percent, fantastic which means again 647 which means at maximum they can spend three dollars per prestige rating which means this is going to be a 20 dollar ride $20 for a minute and six seconds. And as soon as we open this, boom. It's not going to be the Grand Carousel. It's going to be the Cod Carousel, as we've already established right here. This is going to make us boatloads. Oh, oh, one other thing. Actually, two other things. One, operations, no minimum wait time, but we are going to wait for a full load. That way, as soon as there's enough people on the ride, boom, you just go. But we're also going to do a maximum wait time of, of, you know, let's do a maximum wait time of 60 seconds. Because I don't want people standing in line any longer than they need to. Let's see all the people that are, yep, people are already showing up. There we go. There's all the people that are very, very slowly walking in the darkness towards our, our wonderful, wonderful, Parasel in the woods. I love this. I love this. It's nice and it's pretty. It's it's pretty good. It's pretty good. What are our, actually? What are our challenges? Forty-seven people visit your restaurant for two months in a row. We don't we don't have anybody in the park. Why are you doing this? In a hotel room with at least two rooms. We don't. No, we're gonna delete those challenges because we're not there yet. I mean, maybe a restaurant in a little bit, but not yet. So while we're just waiting for the people to come in, a little bit of a plan for this. So like I said earlier, this is going to be based on the World's Fairs, the Columbian Exposition, the White City in Chicago, the one that gave us the Ferris wheel and the Midway Place, all of those different things. And so we're going to have like a central, well, maybe just off to the side here, or maybe here, we're going to have a central lagoon. It's like a large tower at the end. It's going to have some rides attached to it, some buildings floating around that are going to be like exhibition halls. But in these exhibition halls, you also get wild mouse roller coasters. Inside them, you also get bumper cars on the ground floor. So we're going to really try to play with this kind of architecture in space. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I will explain my concept as we go. And hopefully things will work out. People are finally starting to emerge from their hobbit caves. Which is lovely. Look at all these people. Like all of these people. Just for one ridiculously overpriced carousel. Like look, don't get me wrong. I love carousels. I love especially the carousel. But, but 
<laughs> but really, 20 bucks? Yeah, not gonna happen. Like, look at all these people. Actually, they're walking through the trees. I think once we get the full pathways, we're gonna have like little side pathways where the benches actually go. So I think these benches can move. Yeah, the benches can move onto the ground. Just like that. But not these two, because there's bushes right there. And we're going to have, like, curbs and whatever where these trees actually go. But yeah, look at the depth of field. This, game, this is a very pretty game. It is a very pretty game. But while we wait for that, let's also get park management. Let's get some research going. Let's get a runaway coaster. Boom, this is the side friction roller coaster. We definitely need that. Let's get staff. Let's get one of them lovely boys. Let's get one of them lovely boys and one of them lovely boys. We don't need any vendors right now because we don't have any shops, but we will open those fairly soon. What are people thinking? I want to go on carousel. She looks fast for looks fast for carousel. Is anybody saying they that it's overpriced? Mm. Guests. More rides, not much scenery here. Drink shop, toilet, somewhere to sit down. Had a food shop. Sit down on the bench, guys. Got benches right there. But it's, yes, yeah, 703. So we can actually charge $21. Boom. $21 per person to ride on a carousel. In, in, which is just absolutely ridiculous. But... There we go. See, right there. This is what? There's what? Eight people on this ride? One, two? There's three, four people on this ride. With four people on this ride, or five, six, we're making a. We're only losing $227. But look at all these other people that are going to go on. Right? Like, this. This. Just all you need to do in order to prop and this is harder mode. This is as hard as it gets. All you need to do is just maximize the ride sequence to, rax to maximize prestige. And once this becomes a classic, then we can drop down the rotations. Although I do still think that for a ride that's only a minute and 45 seconds, <laughs> honestly, $21 is preposterous. I, 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 you can get a day at Canada's Wonderland or La Conde, the two amusement parks that I'm most familiar with because I lived in Toronto and Montreal. You can get an entire season's pass for 75 bucks. At least you could last time I lived in Canada. So for four rides on this carousel, you get an entire summer, an entire season of thrills, including the, the, the tallest vertical drop in the world including the seventh fastest and tallest roller coaster on the planet oh yeah i need a staff building so 21 dollars for a single that's just madness the worst one ride that i ever spent money on i mean i don't regret it i don't regret it but it was um it was 10 bucks us dollars to go on um the roller coaster at santa monica pier because I've only been to LA once. I'm actually planning on going again in about two or three months. But at the time, I figured that would be the only time I would go to LA. And so I was in Santa Monica. And so I just hopped on to the roller coaster. And I got two rounds for, I think, 10 bucks US. Hey. And yeah, not really worth it as far as the experience goes. But just to say it was on one of the westernmost roller coasters in the United States. It's a pretty cool thing for me. But 21 bucks for a carousel? Yo. These guys are getting absolutely ripped off. And I do kind of feel bad, but at the same time, not really. Because it's a game and they're not real. Now, I did upgrade the price. Nope, still nobody is contemplating how overpriced copper cell is. There you go. We're already making 500 bucks. And as, you know, we had a second ride, things will get a little bit more popular. But I mean, people are still rushing to get to the carousel. 
So I'm enjoying this. Yeah, we lost $165 last month, but that was because A, this didn't open up. See, people are just going right back on. They're just going right back on, giving me another $21 each. Boom, $886. This is preposterous. This is absolutely preposterous. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this money and we're going to reinvest it in the park proper. Because this is not the final park. This is not what the aesthetic is going to look like. This was cheap. This was simple. This was to the point. This was just getting people into the park, getting the ride going so we can gouge them. Like, here we go. Like, this is, this is madness. And half of them are just going right back on for another $21. Just give me $1,700 for now. Making $1,200 a month from our first ride on harder mode. Yeah, it's not that hard, guys. It's not that hard. But we're going to use this to create the actual park of our dreams with this. We're going to build a lagoon in the next episode. We're going to build a shoot to the shoots. Hopefully as soon as we unlock the side friction roller coaster, we can do a side friction roller coaster which i'm so looking forward to so very much looking forward to uh, a dip the dips these kinds of things some of the oldest uh, maybe we might even have two we might have a scenic railway and then a dip the dips just to see oh and something i'm really excited about in the next month I'm going to be going to Copenhagen in Denmark and I'm going to be going to Tivoli Gardens specifically to ride the Hrutsjabanen one of the second oldest, if I recall correctly, roller coaster on the planet. It's so old, it still has a break person. Okay? And I'm going to give you guys a video on my other channel, which hasn't yet started, but will shortly, uh, about that experience. So keep an open mind and keep your eyes open for that. And keep your eyes open for this money. $2,500. Yeah. Hard mode is not that hard. We can probably pay off our loan very, very soon. In another two sessions or so. And once we're able to, two by sessions, I mean rotations through this, uh, this park, this park, this, this ride is $723 a month. Yep, there we go. Preposterous. $2,500 a month. $2,500 a month. Yep. Yep. I mean, granted. Granted, once it starts becoming less new, once it's prestige, it will drop down a little bit, but then in 13 years when it becomes classic, mmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 70% of the normal prestige, even 70% of the normal prestige will still be absolutely obliterating the economy with this. I figure this should be like a, there should be like a really clickbait title for this video. Bear fig video game playing bear. Changes instructions on classic carousel. Wait till you see what happens next, or something like this. But this is just bonkers. Just bonkers. Granted, we are losing a little bit of profit this month. But that's okay. As soon as people cycle on and off, it's gonna get better. Yeah, this is yo. Yeah. Insanity. Let's, don't forget this. We're losing this while we're also spending that uh, one thousand per month on research. We profited a seven hundred and twenty-three after we spent a thousand on research. Yeah. Hardest mode. Yep. Not so much. What are the challenges? Hotels. No, we're not doing challenges. We're not doing hotel challenges, rather. But yeah, this is. This is easy. Oh, yeah, and we're also paying off our loan. Like, yeah, don't go to university for, like, important things, like medicine. Go to university to maximize profits in Planet Coaster. That's all I need. But I'm going to end this episode here. Thank you very much for watching. If you like what you see, please like, please subscribe, please comment. Most importantly, have a fantastic day, and I do mean that. And, oh, and one more thing. Based on the theme of this video... Go well there to your local theme parks, your local amusement parks. Not necessarily the big ones, not the Disney's, not the Six Flags. They're going to be doing fine from a corporate perspective. But go to your local family and ones, your smaller ones, and go and help them out. If you're physically able, physically able, if you are financially able, and it's not a big health risk to you, go out and support them. They need it, and you will probably 
I can almost guarantee you, you will have a fantastic time. Maybe not like $21 on a carousel fantastic time, but still a fantastic time. And I'll see you guys all next time in Planet Coaster. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Bye.